Okay, as uh, some of y'all may notice here, I've got my uh, my furthest raised bed, the outside raised bed, bed number three, all cleaned up and uh, ready for fall planting. I'm late already on getting my winter my winter garden in. I got yeah winter planting, not fall planting. Um, <clears throat> this is where my sweet potatoes were, you know, all in here. I'm um, coming down to this end, and they were all the way up to about there, I guess. And then I had four big tomato plants right in here. And, uh, you know, after digging up that that sad, sad sweet potato harvest, I had to swallow my pride. Let me see if I can get you a little bit more light there. Maybe you can see a little better. Uh, had to swallow my pride a little bit. But anyway, I got them all pulled up, got them out of the way, got the vines on the compost pile. And then I went ahead and came through here just last night and pulled out uh, what was left of the uh, tomato plants. They were basically all but done for. Um, and I got a little shocked. We had, a, I guess, a light frost or something popped them. So I pulled those out. I got the cages. The cages are just sitting here um, for what it's worth. I know y'all can't see and I'm sorry, but just bear with me. Anyway, what I wanted to tell you tonight was <clears throat> I got the bed all cleaned up. I added in compost uh, down on this end to help fill it back up. And now I've planted onions. Now I'm doing something, I guess, a little different for me this year. I've planted this bed all the way to, well, right past the white paper, probably two-thirds full of uh, onions and garlic. Um, I'm not a huge fan of onions. I mean, I enjoy them. I'll eat them. You know, I don't appreciate what they did in my breath, but, uh, you know, I like them. But we've had really good luck with onions last year, and I know I put a video up about it. Now, the ones I did last year, I started from seed in November, and those are by far the best onions I've ever grown. I, I never thought I'd have much luck with sets. However, the sets that I've done in the past, I planted in early spring down here, you know, March or whenever I could get them. And by the time they started to develop in any decent sized onion, it got too hot and killed them. Um, so what I'm trying this year is I'm trying my sets. And it's now December 4th. I bought these sets, of course, over a month ago at uh, Wabash Feed Store here in Houston. Because um, they're the only ones that had fall onion sets in. But, you know, bought them then and course wasn't ready for them but bought them anyway but let me just show you what I've got here uh, I planted on the corner here I've got one elephant garlic uh, right there and um, you know it's it's supposed to be monstrous I guess but this here alone this is the clove when I bought this thing this this was it that's the one this is two dollars for one clove three dollars I believe actually and it's huge I thought for sure, you know, it needs to split up into something, but no, that, that's it. Um, so I planted that there, and then for distinction, I put just a mix of yellows and reds and rows across here, until, basically until I ran out of a handful. And then I put in, right in here, where you see the white papers again, that's garlic again. And that is what's called early purple garlic. Now, I've never grown any of these varieties of elephant garlic or anything. Uh, the garlic I tried last year... I don't remember if it was a, maybe it was a silver garlic. I have no idea. I think it's one I bought at the store. I really don't remember what it was, and I didn't have good luck with it either. Uh, that's a whole different story. I tried sprouting it in a flower pot and then tried transplanting it, and it just never did take. And again, it was also an early spring sort of deal. And so, you know, I've learned since then, garlic is actually a cool weather crop and does well actually through the, the cooler months, especially down here because the cooler months aren't that cold. So I put in the, uh, again, that is the early purple garlic. And then I went on through with onions, again, just mixing red and yellows because I don't care. They're basically the same thing, just different color. On through to here until I got down to this end, and I finished out with more garlic. And that is, let me look at my cheat sheet here, that is silver rose garlic. So y'all are welcome to, you know, look up the different varieties and see um, what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to perform. I'm just doing it just so I have a good mix. Instead of just planting one variety and not being happy with it, I planted a whole mix and I'll try to see which ones do the best. Um, you might notice also, a lot of your planting guides tell you to bury your sets, poke them down in the ground, bury them an inch deep or whatever. However, I think that's the problem that I have with growing sets is that, you know, it kind of dawned on me with planting seeds, the seed puts down roots where it wants and then that plant has the opportunity to swell a bulb where it wants. When you're planting a set like this, 
that set has already begun to swell and it wants to swell a bulb right there and this is in my opinion some master gardener might tell me I'm wrong and I mean I hope someone tells me if I am wrong it doesn't just ride with it but the way that I you know kind of figure it is it wants to go ahead and swell out where it's already started to swell so if you bury that under the soil your onion is never going to want to grow or your garlic it's not going to want to grow out even if you have a loose friable soil it's just going to have a harder time growing out than if it's sitting atop the ground and I really noticed that um, if you look at my video that I had of uh, you know my onion harvest a lot of the onions had more of a they were more shaped kind of like like this like a flat fist they weren't a round onion like what you buy in the store they kind of had a flatter look to them and that was where that flat bottom sat on the ground and then it swelled out a, a, a you know kind of short chubby bulb above that instead of a nice spherical bulb um, and I've talked to a few other people that have kind of agreed with that concept and you know understand that you really want the bulb to sit on top of the ground as it grows and not be buried down in the soil um, and you know when I planted the garlic last year I planted it buried it down in the ground and it just never did swell out to anything. It put on great green tops, it grew for a long time, it just never did expand out to anything. And I, again, I think that's because it was trying to expand below the soil level and just couldn't. So again, I don't know if that's right, that's just kind of how I how I think about it, I guess. So uh, anyway, that's it for this video. Just want to talk a little bit about putting in the onions. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I've got, again, my automatic sprinkler system. I'm going to go hook it up real quick, turn it on and let it water this bed for a good uh, 20 minutes or so and let it kind of soak in and hopefully that'll help settle these bulbs into place too because I just went I just went along you know and just basically just poked them into the dirt I didn't bury them at all just kind of poked them there um, so yeah we'll kick the waterers on and, okay uh, so y'all can see I've just got the uh, sprinklers on and going now and you can see of course the various onion bulbs out through there and I've got it set on a 30 minute uh, manual run for right now just enough to kind of soak down the ground get some moisture on these bulbs and uh, hopefully get them thinking about sprouting. It's supposed to get cold here the next couple days, so I don't know that they'll do a whole lot of sprouting in the next few days. But I'm going to try to make an effort to come out here and you know hit the water every every day or so, every couple days, whatever. Just make sure it stays moist and, and let these things start putting down some good roots. Uh, one so last thing I'll mention on the onions real quick, and I'll let you all go. Um, just wanted to let you know I put a little bit of fertilizer on them. This is a cottonseed meal. I buy it at my local feed store. He carries it, I believe, as a uh, animal feed supplement. It's uh, you know pretty decent in protein and pretty cheap and available to get. But I like to buy it as a soil amendment. Uh, you can look up on the internet um, the you know ratios and the fertilizer um, benefits of using cottonseed meal. But again, it's pretty decently priced, and uh, I like to uh, yeah I like to use it. It's a good organic uh, solution. So <clears throat> anyway. I went ahead and just put that out on the garden here just based on a little planting guide that I have for onions that says they need you know, a high fertility soil. Um, and I like to put it down, it's almost like a powder, it's, it's like kind of a granular powder. I like to put it down when I'm watering, that way it kind of washes into the soil and I don't have to actually rake it into the soil like a lot of fertilizers say, you know, till it into the soil. I like to just let it water into the soil. Um, I have put it on my sweet potatoes when they were here a few months ago. I put it on them and I noticed um, immediately after I put it on within a week's time everything really greened up and from then on the sweet potatoes just grew like absolute crazy so uh, again it, I've definitely seen the benefits of it it definitely works and it's, a, it's cheap and easy to get and uh, I, I think I believe I bought it I prefer it because it's not you know just loaded in nitrogen it has a pretty good NPK ratio and it might actually have more it might actually have more phosphorus in it and potassium and nitrogen. I'm not for sure. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, it, like I said, it's it's a pretty good balance. It's pretty easy. And being it is a organic fertilizer, it will not burn your plants. So, you know, no such thing as too much, basically. And of course, don't go plant and straight fertilizer. But you know, you don't have to be out here measuring it with a tablespoon and reading fancy directions to dilute it down. You just I just sprinkle it on by hand or with a little cup. So, like I said, just wanted to add that on the end there. I did fertilize the onions.